Now, the arguments aside, there are children right in the middle of this. And looking at that expose by John Alanamu and Mohamed Ali, there are children who've lost their lives, uh, of course, in this whole saga. So let's bring in Dr. David Gishaga. He is a Kenya Pediatrics Association chairman. Dr. Ari, thank you for speaking to us tonight on K10 Prime. Looking at the story, the expose by John Alanamu and Mohamed Ali, we saw the effects the lead was having on children. What does it do to the organs of children? Thank you very much. First of all, it's important to say a few things about children. Number one, they are short. That means they function and breathe very close to the ground. So anything they can breathe will tend to be taken a lot more in. Children breathe a lot more air. They eat a lot more food in relation to their sizes. Children are growing, meaning that their different organs are forming at different stages. And depending on the toxins they get exposed to, they will have an effect for a long period of time. In other words, children have a long shelf life. Sadly, children have a lot of behaviors of hand mouth. They take things and put in the mouth for, as an exploratory habit, not necessarily for feeding. And importantly with children, they are politically powerless. They are not able to talk about their own issues. And that, of course, means that somebody has to advocate for their issues. Mm. Those are important issues when you are talking about matters that relate to children. Specifically about the lead. Lead has been called the intellectual robber. We have known about lead for the last 100 years, but it's up to the 40s, 1940s, that we realized that it affects the intellect. It affects the brain at a certain critical period of development. And these children have lots of neurobehavioral issues, hyperactivity, inattention, irritability, poor learning, and so on. And of, obviously, when they are exposed at certain periods of time, these issues are permanent. And we know they are not reversible in very many situations. All right, so let's focus on the organs of the body. What part of the organs of the body of children does this affect? How bad is it? Now, of course, uh, when you have a baby or a child, up to the age of two years, there's a lot of central nervous system that is developing. When they are hit by certain levels of lead, and there is no safe limit of lead. We take 10 micrograms uh, per deciliter as a cutoff point, merely to prompt us to take action. But at certain levels, when you affect the child, then you have a permanent damage that uh, cannot be reversed. Of course, if the levels are high in the 40s, 50s, 70s, and so on, they have acute toxicity, and many of these children may die because it affects not just their brain, but also their liver, their kidneys, uh, uh, their skin and so forth and uh, some of those uh, changes are pretty much permanent. Dr. I know you've touched on this uh, in a few seconds ago but is there hope, is there medical intervention that can save these children? Yes, yes there is. The first thing is awareness and I congratulate you for bringing this to the fore. When people are not aware then you tend not to do anything about it. Sometimes this does get over to uh, 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 the, uh, the medical personnel. Maybe children can keep on coming with the same sort of problems and so on. We need to sensitize ourselves, even those of us that work with children, to think about the environment. Therefore, proper taking of the history. Where do you live? What are the, the activities that happen around you? Where do you get your water? How many times have you been in the hospital? To widen our scopes of thinking. This is important. You may have a father who works in a place that handles a lot of lead. They come with the same clothes and they expose their own children to these sort of risks. That is important. You may have a mother who is expectant, mm. who uh, uh, exposes her unborn baby to the same problem. So history, sensitization of both the public and the medical personnel so that you can intervene. That is 50% of the solution of the problems. You okay. avoid them. Then, of course, for the acute toxicity, uh, if you have very, very high levels, we sometimes do something called binding with chelation agents, agents that sort of 
uh, sort of mop up the, 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 the chemical and remove it through the urine. Dr. Doctor, would you explain to stage. our viewers how that works? Because I'm sure that is the question on the minds of so many of our viewers. How does that work? Because we have children involved in this and we saw some very disturbing levels of lead in their systems. How does that work? Where can one get uh, such kind of help? Uh, number one is to think about the levels. As I mentioned, when you have 10 micrograms, maybe the figure to remember is 10, mm. it means that you have to be aware about investigating the environment. But the moment you're hitting your 40s, 40s, 50s, you need to be managed by a person who knows what they're doing. That means you have to go to your medical uh, uh, caregiver near where you stay. You have to give history basically indicating the risks of exposure to this sort of situation. They will assess and depending on the levels, then they will be given a drug that's able to mop that. But if mop the, the lead, but if this happened some times back, and you already have an effect, say you were exposed four or five years ago, the damage has already taken place and you cannot reverse. Some of that damage is irreversible. Some of these kids will have hypertension in future because of the exposure they had. So it's mitigating the problem rather than sorting it out. Sorting it out means you sort it out at source. Okay, so depending on how long someone has been exposed to this, it can actually be mopped up? Preci precisely. All right, Dr. Ari, finally, before I let you go, some of these children still live in Owino Uhuru. If you're to address NEMA officials, because essentially this falls in their docket, what should they be doing now? Because looking at that expose, they were very particular, some experts were very particular that this lead is in the soil, then that translates to plants, that translates to water. What should be happening now? Definitely, uh, if you, you are in the ground that's very, very exposed to this high level, you have to remove those people from that environment. First of all, you stop uh, having the lead being uh, pushed into the water and into the air, and then you move the people from consuming the water that is already contaminated and so forth. Then you have to try and educate the people to get the kids to wash their hands, because as I mentioned, children tend to eat things and put mm. in their mouth things that are not necessarily nutritious. So again, it's preventing these things sort of happening, educating the public and removing them away. And I know it's not easy to say you're removing people from where they stay, but those are really the actions. Avoidance, avoidance, avoidance. Dr. David Gishanga, thank you so much for helping us to understand much. the effects of lead on children. Dr. David Gishanga, they are saying lead is an intellectual Robert, we hope some of these children can get help.